You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am Scott Hambrick. I have with me Matt Reynolds. And Howdy, Scott. Hey, man. Good morning. How are you? Well, just before we turn the mics on for everybody else to hear, you said, man, you do look old this morning. You do kind of look old. Yeah. It's not your best look. <laughs> well, I don't know what the difference is. It's not like I put on makeup and lashes and shit sometimes. I know. Just like sometimes I have you've... a look, and so apparently my look is old. No, no, no. You've looked, you've, I felt like the I last couple of times you looked a little younger. I didn't put any pomade in. I don't think it's your hair. It's your, it's my it's face. The, it's the, <laughs> yeah, it's your face. The face is a little redder this morning. Yeah. Yellow rose going color. And got those rose man color. Gla- got those old man glasses on. So, you know, you look like Papa Scott. Yeah. I weighed 226.6 this morning. So I'm on the way back down. Right, and the and the weights on the barbell are on the way back up, so that much is good. But you know, yeah. all craggy faced and yeah, I squatted and deadlifted yesterday. I feel okay. This is my first as I've gotten back into training. I think yesterday was my first lower body workout where I'm not sore today. Right, all my you know all my getting back into it the first few sessions, and I would and I was going like one set of five and then two sets of five, you know, so like slowly building up. I was just, God, the first workout, I did one set of five on squat and one set of five on deadlift. And the next day I was like, oh my God, I'm so sore. This is crazy. It was super yeah. conservative with the weight too, you know, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty good other than the fact that it's like 45 degrees outside and raining right now and it's dark. It looks like it's 830 at night. Yeah. Right all now. is right with the world. It's supposed to be that. It's October 24th, man. I, I like the cold. I just, I like it sunny. And you know, I don't know if you know this. I I didn't know. I'd heard a lot of wives' tales about like what makes better leaves, fall leaves. You know, we got we got beautiful fall leaves here. Um, it has nothing to do with the rain. Like how much rain we get, right? Dry, wet, whatever doesn't make better leaves. What makes good leaves is is cool nights and sunny days. And you actually don't want any big storms because, of course, if big storms come while the leaves are turn it can just blow all the leaves off the trees anyway and then you lose them early so yes if i remember correctly when the leaves change and are colorful the chloroplasts die but yeah. the chromoplasts are not dead correct and uh refrigerating them at night and then giving them plenty of sun in the day i think is what helps do that yeah that's exactly right yeah what's interesting for me is like the way some of these trees already will be super red super colorful and all the trees around them just be as green as can be. Right. And so sometimes even the exact same type of tree, like you have two oak trees in your front yard, one oak tree turns before the other one. I don't I don't understand that at all. That doesn't make any sense. Well, we're all individuals, Matt. Is that what it is? Everybody's a snowflake. I don't fucking know. Including the oak trees. Colin, who... Uh, he, Col- he's he grief. We he answer a lot. two questions from Colin every week. Yeah, Colin emails a lot. but Colin, what if you just joined... Barbell Logic Online Coaching, you know, you could email that experience might at Barbell Hyphen Logic. Oh, maybe he is a maybe he is a client. Yeah, but oh, but I think he on. was, and he was asking for his wife. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and he's an OGB member, and uh, and okay, uh, cool. He's he's living right. the woodpile well, taller. You. All right, then you can keep throwing questions at us. That's good. Uh, he says, when transitioning from a three day to a four day split, you stick with the squat, deadlift, bench, and press in an intensity and volume split, right? Would right. you add any novel li- lifts along with the four? The pick four when you start your four day split. I would, but I would I would start with uh, some accessory movements before I started with novel barbell movements. So well, when I go to a four day split, I'll usually add some accessory movements. Is that what he's asking for? I would do that first. Well, he says, would you only add a novel lift when a weakness in a lift uh, starts to manifest itself? For example, adding the pin press when failing on the press uh, sure. at lockout. And that is true for me. I don't add anything until I need to. Me too. That's the same. Although I typically, because the workouts are so much shorter, I like doing a real quick accessory circuit or something at the end for both lifts. So or Why? for both days. Because uh, I like, well, I mean, because you're doing chins or something anyway. So it's like chins or rows. And then usually like 
dips or LTEs or rolling dumbbell extensions and then barbell curls. And I would run those in a circuit on the upper body day. Yeah. And you knock every one of those out, like literally from start to finish in 10 to 12 minutes. And on lower body day, depending on what they have access to, it might just be pushing a prowler at that point or and I like a heavy prowler more than yeah. just a light prowler. It might be glute ham raises and reverse hypers if they have access to that or glute ham raises and back extensions or whatever. So just something to get some additional work capacity in. You know, when people, after people get done with LP, uh, they kind of have that Tauntaun T-Rex look. And uh, I have been adding in some uh, stuff to just add add a little uh, mass to their upper body. Sure. Um, but so, so, and if they're, if they're overweight, I'll add, if they're overweight, I'll add stuff in as well. But as far as uh, doing uh, supplemental lifts, I don't add any of those in until, uh, uh, until we need to remediate a problem with the main lift, but I do add some accessories. Like you said, they should already be chinning, man. So I've been coming back from, um, you know, laying off there because of that little surgery thing. And, yep. um, I'm, do, I'm doing a, just three days, but I already know what's up. So this isn't necessarily M E D, but I know what's up for me. So I've been, uh, chinning, dipping, rowing curls, um, uh, pretty darn heavy. You know, Charity and I keep saying, we Charity and I were used to dip a lot, and we got real strong. Like, I, I think I did, like, body weight plus 85 for three triples, which is pretty good for as long-armed as I am. And we stopped doing sure. that. And uh, we always say, gosh, I wish I hadn't stopped doing that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that. Yeah. Yeah, the first week back doing dips when you haven't done them in a while, <laughs> you're you're all shaky. Oh, you're shaking man. the whole time you're doing it, you know, and it's like you're in a full-body convulsion. Sad Number indeed. Five. Yep. Colin, at the end of this, he says, thank you for your continual service to your fellow man and making your duty to right the wrongs of exercise and promote the character-shaping experience of strength training. I, for one, am better for it. Thank you. Thank you for saying so. Thanks, man. That's great. Richard says, wanted to th- wants to thank us for the content and et cetera. Thank you, Richard. He's five foot 10, 245 pounds, 28 years old. And uh, he says... I was wondering if you guys ever move folks over from LP to an intermediate programming because of their squats interfering with the other lifts in the workout. His, cu- uh, his current lifts are, Jesus Christ, 440 by 5 for the squat, 285, 3 by 5 for the bench press, 205, 3 by 3 for the press, and uh, deadlift 440 for 4. He says, yep. my squat is caught up with the deadlift, and I've been feeling very drained after performing the squats. Um, he's eating about... Surprise. Yeah, no oh, shit. Um, four day split, four day split, man. Yeah, four day split. Yeah, get continue your, your, your continue your LP yeah. on a four day split. Yeah, you can, and then pretty soon you'll end up with a kind of primary squat day, and you'll have some deadlift volume afterwards. And then the other day you'll be real heavy on the deadlift, and you'll be lighter volume squats. And same thing on those upper body lifts. That's a problem. You you are definitely ready for that sort of thing. He sure. says. Uh, he says right now he's doing three by three for press and rotating between the deadlift clean and chins for pulls. Get rid of that fucking power clean. Yeah. 28 years old and got kids and shit. Knock that off. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, well, if you really, well, I mean like, and if you really like to do it, you can do it as a warm up to the deadlift, but I, I don't like the idea. You're of, strong. What are you going to, what's it? Yeah, I, I agree, man. Like again, if you want to play with it as the, as a warm up to the deadlift on the same day as the deadlift, I just hate replacing any deadlift or heavy pull day with a clean because it's just not heavy enough. Yeah, and your squat's ahead of your deadlift anyway. I, I wouldn't – I think I've said this before. I don't know that I would ever, for just about anybody, deadlift only one time a week. I don't think it's enough. So that idea of deadlift one time a week, lighter pull the second time a week, which is often like a clean or a barbell row, and a chin the third time, no, 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 no. You just throw the chin at the end of all of them if you want right. to, or every other one or something. And if you need to alternate, because you can't deadlift every session, just alternate between the deadlift and the row. Yeah. Or a deadlift and a lighter deadlift. Or a, you know, I whatever. want you, uh, I want you, since you're 28 years old, I want you pulling twice a week, period. Um, yeah. But the end is an eye uh, on LP. Uh, but man, very great, good work here. And um, you ought to be proud. I'm proud of you. It's heavy squat. Yeah. More high squat. And he writes in here about his food intake and so on. He's doing, you're doing great work here, Richard. Uh, probably time for a little programming help. You could uh, email experience at barbell 
hyphenlogic.com and uh, maybe get a little uh, get a little help with that. Nicholas says, "Hi guys, I'm looking for some advice on hey, training. <laughs> uh, looking for advice on training and recovery balance for someone with a physically demanding job. I work in hardscape, landscape, construction, wheelbarrow work, lifting heavy stones, wall blocks, concrete, etc." Um, he started and gave up on LP once already, uh, six weeks ago, he committed to the program and he wants to succeed at it. He's eating around 4,500 calories a day. He's getting his eight hours of sleep. He's 30 years old, five foot 10, and he weighs 180. He says, I have not stalled out or anything yet. And it's going much better than the first time. I just wanted to reach out and get some preemptive advice. What do you say for hardworking Nicholas? Are you really Nicholas? Are you not Nick? Like, we need to go to Nick. Dude, you're 30 years old, and you've got your first kid on the ground. And uh, he says he's got a, a wife. And and he's his a blue-collar guy. Yeah, you're Nick now. Nicholas is, Nicholas is what they... It's for bankers That's when stuff. you go to the principal's office. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's not okay. So I, I think we've answered questions like this before. I mean, look, it's not optimal, but I think you, ha- I think you have to train before you work. Guys like that. Right. You get up early and train early in the morning before you go and do the hard labor job. Because it's so hard. Because your training's not going to affect the hard labor job. You're going to be like, boy, I sure am having a hard time with this wheelbarrow today from my squats this morning. Like, that's not going to happen. But you know what is going to happen? If you show up at the gym at 5.30 in the evening after hauling rock all day, you're going to be like, boy, the hauling rock's actually really screwed up my squat. So, yeah. So, I would just I – would, I would get up early in the morning, and I would train, and I'd go to work, and then I'd enjoy my nights, right? Rest in the evenings. Spend time with your kids. Kid, he has one kid. Yep. Whatever. Just hang out with your family. Have good dinner. Rest most of the evening. Get up and do it again the next day. That's that's the best. Your best option. Yep. And you're five foot ten, and you've gained twenty pounds, and are now one eighty. Uh, you need to keep socking those groceries away, and uh, you need to be you know bopping around at around two o five or whatever. So, uh, you know, eating plenty and putting on body weight is going to help you recover, and. Uh, make you a uh, harder working machine both in the gym and at the hardscape landscape gig yeah, you'll be surprised at how much easier it is to haul the rock and move that wheelbarrow when you're at another 20 pounds of body weight get a little stronger yeah kurt fan- says uh first your podcast is excellent why thank you he says i really enjoy the balance of technical philosophical and the humor that you have developed my question is this My basement gym has a dense, thin carpet over most of the dense carpet padding. As my squat and deadlift weight increases, I find my feet shifting under the load, even in good squat shoes. Uh, I'm thinking of putting either a rogue Olympic platform with rubber mats under my lifting area or building a plywood platform similar to what you've described. Yes, everybody should have a platform. Yeah. Don't lift on carpet. I mean, like like my room is carpeted and it's not perfect, the one that I'm lifting in now. But it's but it's great for sound. I mean, we built my gym more for the more for the YouTube videos to deaden right. the sounds. So there's not a bunch of echo, and I just built the, one of those platforms on top of the carpeted floor. Right. But I, I would not. I wouldn't put a rack in on carpet and then lift on carpet. So no. talking about a nice big heavy rack that sits on a heavy platform, a heavy rack that sits on top of a heavy platform on top of the carpet, and that squishes that carpet down pretty good. Yeah, it's going to ruin bounce. that carpet. So of course, it's going to ruin the carpet, but yeah. it's a gym. Who cares? How much uh, does it cost to replace a carpet in one yeah. room? Uh, he says, you know, Rogue Olympic platform or build your own. Uh, man, build your own. The, the, sure. the Rogue one is is really nice, um, but it's expensive. And it has those hooks on it for uh, bands. So if you want to do banded deadlifts and stuff, which is nice, but you have to trip over those, those things, you know, yeah. every day. <laughs> So I, I like just a regular old uh, plywood platform. Uh, you want it to be two layers of three-quarter inch plywood with a layer of horse stall mats on top of it for a total of, what is that, two and three-quarter inches thick. And uh, you're not going to be squishy. No mo. Yep. You will love it, Kurt. Your, your, your squat is going to be so much more stable, and you're going to be so much more confident under the bar uh, with, with the platform. You won't even Plus believe it. Plus you can it. bolt your platform down on – I mean, bolt your rack down on the platform – with some some decent lag bolts and they're you know they're not it's not going to be perfect it's not like locking the thing into a concrete anchor or something but it, it works pretty well now, i assume you're not you don't have your rack bolted down onto your carpet carpeted floor currently but weird so this one's yep. super weird justin says hey guys really love the show 
Thank you so much for listening, Justin. Thank you for taking the time to send this fucked up email to us. Oh, here we, see, he this says, is where you can read it, and I, I don't know what's coming yet, but I'm excited. It's like Christmas. He says, I want to start training for the Arnold Pump and Run. In case you're not familiar with it, it's a combo of a four, 5K run and max reps of bench press at your body weight. Each rep of bench press decreases your 5K time by 30 seconds, up to 30 maximum reps. My question, what's the best way to program bench to get closer to repping my body weight for 30 reps? Could I run LP at 1 by 30 as an accessory to my 3 by 5 or is that stupid? The whole goddamn enterprise is stupid, Justin. <laughs> All right. I mean, unless there's a 10, like, unless the guy could win $10,000 or something out of the deal. Then I, you know. Yeah, who cares? There's, there's other ways to get money, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to do some bench press and some 5K to win 10 grand. But my guess is that the guy is actually not only not going to win money, and he is actually going to pay a significant entry fee to do this. I'm actually so going to lose money. I could just travel the disgust run, and in my face. Body weight, body weight bench press. Uh, certainly there are, there are techniques that we can use. We've talked about that some on like the NFL combine type stuff about, uh, what they do to, for the 225 bench press for reps to try to get the most reps possible. There's, you can look at some of the uh, strategies there to do that, but I, I still would do LP and then, uh, would practice a little bit with higher rep stuff, but yeah, it's kind of a goofy sport, man. Just, just do LP. Yeah. Just get strong. Just get strong. Pump and run. I just I thought it was maybe for I thought it was a, the pump and run I thought it was like for lactating women like women who just had babies I'll tell you and one so thing they had to like every mile they run they have to stop and they have to pump if I won that they, would never tell a soul I'm not wearing a t-shirt that says pump and run pump, on it pump like, and run you know you're you're not going to be able to get within a hundred yards of a bicycle rack or a, or an elementary school with that t-shirt on no for sure no yeah that's true. Solomon says, love the podcast. Thank you for the content and providing it for free. Thank you. He says, he'll be entering a 10-month-long intense paramedic training program. He says, think 80-plus hours a week, little sleep, and lots of stress. I'm ex expecting my recovery to be poor. What kind of yes. modifications to LP would I make to help account for that? Should I just accept that my recovery will be too poor to make any significant progress? He's six foot five. 275 pounds. Okay. His working sets are 295 for the squat, 345 for the deadlift, 250 for the bench, and 120 for the press, if that matters. Yeah, you probably still make a little bit of progress. You're going to either have to go to two days a week or you're going to have to go to one lift a day, something like that. Yeah. Like, obviously, you can't. You're probably not going to be able to do three full, full body workouts uh, every single week and add weight to it every single time. Like your recovery is just not going to be there. So, so you get in and do what you can. What yeah. You so I read this and I'm like, hmm, 10 months, 80 hours a week, training program. This is not a training program. This is slave labor. You can't right. learn anything for 80 hours a week. I mean, you know, you have to have time to ruminate on it. You have to have time to study. You have to have time to rest. You can't concentrate and actually learn new things for 80 hours sure. a week. They're just working you people. You, yeah, you, 80 you, hours, that's, cr that's crazy for like paramedics too. It's one thing like when you hear about you know, doctors in residency, they're oh, that's learning awesome. how to do a hand. It is slavery. It's horrible. But I mean, yeah. it, it makes a little more sense. Like if you're a hand surgeon or a brain surgeon, it's just like lots of hours of just experience. You're just, you're, it's tons of experience, but like paramedic school for 10 months, well, they're probably hours? getting some, you know, you probably got to be on call a lot to, you know, get a, sure. you know, this kind of trauma call sure. or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, but I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's too many hours. That's yeah, uh, the, you're you're not going to do very well on LP, and that's okay. That's okay. Just you know, be patient with yourself. Lifting. Yeah, just lift and do the best you can. Do, yep. You'll blink, and the ten months will be over, and you'll look back on it five years from now and be like, "Ah, oh, that was kind of a crappy year." And you'll be like, it'll kind of be a faint memory. You'll look back on it and say, "Yeah, they did use me." Of course. You know, paramedics don't make enough money. I, I'm not no. one to gripe about what other people make. You know, like sure. everybody cries about what teachers don't make, but you know. Uh, paramedics make surprisingly little money. Yeah, these first responders that save your life if you're in a car accident, making thirty-two grand a year. EMTs. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they they make a, they don't make a great <laughs> deal. No. Uh, but you know, lots of dudes want to do that, so that's why they don't make much money. Like you know, it sounds fun, sure. the adrenaline stuff. It sounds fun, and so they're just like you know, piled up at the entrance to try to get in, and so the wages are depressed. Anything that lots of people want to do, you're just not going to get paid very much. Right. Which includes 
barbell coaching. Ardra <laughs> says, apparently I'm the 13th female listener. Au contraire, you are number you 21. You are not 21. Look, we nailed it. Yeah. She found our podcast recently, has been binge listening since. Thank you. She is 40-something. She competed at her first meet in the spring. Um, loved the last two blocks. She pulled 360. Wow. Uh-huh. Strong. Yeah, she's working in in the 8s and 10s range. She has a coach that has her working in the uh, 8 to 10 rep area. She says she feels like she's being crushed by the squatting or knees ache. Um, she says, should, I'm listening now to you stuff. talk about master's lifters being driven more by intensity than volume, which rings true for me. Ugh, what do I do? I like my coach, but don't know if he knows how to handle me. Well, you know, then stay friends with your coach, get coffee with them every once in a while, and then fire them as a coach because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. And she, hire a coach, in fact, that does know what they're doing. She weighs um, 67 kilos, which is 148 pounds. She God squatted. Damn. She squ- squatted two seventy, benched one eighty five, and pulled three eighty five, and uh, hasn't been Grief. at this very long. Real uh, strong. Yeah, I, I actually spoke with Ardra on the phone, and oh, you did kind of laid out some programming that Ardra is Ardra, A R D R A. In our talks, uh, I got up to nine with her. Oh, you got to a, a, a Scott Hambrick level nine. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty intense. Yeah, she she did okay. She did okay. Um. But she needs to, um, she, yeah, you, you need to peel some of that volume back, or at least, um, I don't know how much volume you're doing. If you're doing one set of 10, it's not really that much volume, but you need to pull pull the rep range back and uh, go a little bit heavier, and um, somebody needs to be really watching your bar speed and make sure they're not grinding you up. Um, 40 years yeah, old. Yeah, we talk, we talk about that, the said principle, you know, the specific adaptation of imposed demand. So the idea is that whatever you, whatever you, um, put your body through, your body's going to adapt to that style of thing. If you want to be a competitive power lifter where you do singles and you're going to primarily train that by doing tens and eights, it doesn't work very well. No. So that, yeah, that doesn't mean probably. that there's not a time for tens and eights, especially for accessory movements and trying to get some additional hypertrophy and whatnot. But ultimately, yeah, I'm sure she's far out from her meat. She's probably, you know, 12 weeks out, 14 weeks out. And we're in, he probably does a typical Western style periodization, right? Where he's going to drop the reps over, over the next 10 weeks or so. Yeah. And, but, and he's probably working with the idea that he's going to do some hypertrophy work here post meat, right? With your eights and tens, yeah. but sure. which, you know, in theory sounds all right, but you know, your knees are telling you the truth. Those are 40 year old knees no telling what you did to those knees when you were a, a young person. So let's sure. knock that shit off. And uh, yeah, again, it's not about, it's not about anti-volume as much as it is about the way you get that volume. So, you know, you can oh, do three sets got, of eight or you can do three sets of eight or you can do eight sets of three. That's all the same volume. I've got your knees. Will, will doing seven there. triples in their squats. Yeah. I, I have t- most of my clients are doing stuff like that. Yeah. Six, seven, eight triples on squats and deadlifts. They work just fine. Lots of volume, but it's it's much easier to recover from. Less form degradation over the course of the set, so on and so forth. So, yep, that's what you should do. Oh, gosh. Mike says in the subject line, Uncle Matt wishes he did more mo- mobility and recovery work. On episode 217, what would you do differently? <laughs> Mr. Reynolds mentioned that he wishes he would have spent more time with a lacrosse ball under his shoulders over the years. I understand that many feel that the internet mobility foam roller gurus go overboard. So may I ask for more details about a regular routine you might recommend that's helpful for barber's bell training? Thanks, a 39-year-old dude with tight shoulders. See what you've done, Matt? You see what I you know. fucking did? Damn it. It's too many hours of recording. At some point, you say something dumb. At some you point. Foot, at every you show. Put foot, you put your foot <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> uh, I, I am of the opinion that people who do mobility work tend to not need to do mobility work. Like the, you know, it's like these people who want to do the CrossFit yoga stuff, they're already perfectly mobile. Yeah. And they just need to really focus on getting strong, but they won't focus on getting strong because they want to spend too much time getting mobile. And that guys like Brian Shaw and myself, you know, because we're basically the same size, we want to just spend all of our time like, getting you're strong. You're basically the same size. He weighs 140 yeah. pounds more than you, six inches yeah, taller. Yeah, right. That's just, yeah, whatever. It's close enough. <laughs> Me and Charity are <laughs> basically the same joke. size. <laughs> it was a minute is a joke. Eight inches <laughs> taller. 
hundred yeah, pounds. Yeah, you know, I mean, guys, guys that tend to be really strong and you know, sort of tight and muscle bound to the point that they have a hard time bending over and tying their shoes, right? So we're not talking about. I don't care about doing the splits or being able to scratch every part of my back or anything, but uh, you know, because I got I got people that can scratch my back for me. That's not have that do. done. So you can pay for that, but at the Tulsa Day Spa, <laughs> theoretically we could we can pay to have people tie my shoes too, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, I, I just think that guys that are big and strong and tight would probably be better making sure they're moving through a really full range of motion. And part of it is, is that like, I wasn't really strict for many years about moving through full range of motion on the lifts, especially in things like the press and making sure that I really fully locked up the press and shrugged the press at the top, you know, things like that. I wish I had done that a little more, taking a little better care of my joints, a little less high impact stuff. Yeah. Let's say the truth here. You really wish you hadn't done all that strongman shit. Because um, rolling around on a goddamn lacrosse ball isn't going to yeah. get is isn't going to undo all of the uh, no the, awful things you did to yourself. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, but I'm still happy that I did strongman. Can but, I get you, know, you I'll to? Probably, I'll probably have double hip replacements in the next five years, and then ask me if I wish I had done it. You've been saying that for five I years. Yeah. I know. Um, can I get you to retract that statement about you wish you had done more mobility and sure. rom wide? Can I get you to sure. retract? Can we issue a retraction? I didn't right say now? I don't think I said rom wide. <laughs> Did I say rom wide? <laughs> I don't know. I hope not. Uh, sh- yes, I'll retract that statement. Ah, so good. Levi. <laughs> Levi says, I want to say thank you. Just finished LP. I can say that it 100% works. It does. He says he's 37 years old, has four children, five foot ten. He weighed over 260 one year ago, but in January he read, I can't hurt my me. I can't hurt my. I can't. By David Goggins and figured out that I was a fat, lazy pussy. I weighed one, 245 at that time. <laughs> I bought a treadmill and quickly found that running sucks. Uh, I then started some dumbbell work from Muscle and Strength Magazine. Did that for three months with no results. Um, and he thought, um, there was no way that LP would work. It was worth a shot. So he started LP at the following. Waist at the belly button, 44 inches. Weight, 242. Uh, his bench was 240, a squat, 275. Deadlift, 300. Dude, those, if that's really where you started, that was, that was really strong. strong. Yeah. That's crazy. So what's he at now? Uh, he did it for four and a half months, never missed a workout, became obsessed with it, finished with these numbers, 221 body weight. Did nothing. He says, I tried not to lose weight. Waist, 39 inches. He's got five inches <laughs> off his waist. Bench, 335. Squat, 385 for five. Deadlift, 475 for five. He pulled a 505 single and could have nice. done more, he says, but he ran out of plates. And he pressed 200 for five. He says, with tears running strong. down my... Yeah, it's fantastic. He says, with tears running down my face, I say, thank you. You've added years to my life. Uh, I think of all the things that I would have missed had I not done this. You've changed me as a person. I would have been that fat person... <laughs> I love the show because you two are real people and I have a lot in common with y'all. My wife and I homeschool our kids. I was a high school football coach for five years and got out to make more money for the family. We are debt free except for our house. Um, nice, no, man. Thanks, man. And this That's is also cool. my Texas redneck friend. Uh, oh, you know this guy? Yeah. And uh, yeah. well, I've come to know him through the show. But uh, uh, hey, great work there. You dude, are a awesome. freak. Yeah. Um, you are a freak. Very few people end up. Um, coming out of LP with those sort of numbers on the barbell, but the result that you got with your waistline and your body weight are not that uncommon if people uh, eat, eat, eat properly and do their work and don't miss and push LP, not, you know, yep. leisurely meander through LP the thing. really does work for everybody. So yep. your, your end results might not be quite as good um, as this guy's, but yep, your body again? will uh, recomposition. That's right. I don't like that word, but it works. What's you, this guy's will, name again? So I can put it in my head. This is uh, this is Levi. Levi, that's right. Yeah. Levi, Levi. And uh, your body will, everyone's body will change, and uh, their um, appearance will improve. Their waistline will come down. Their body weight may go up or it may come down, but all, everybody ends up looking better naked, and everybody ends up stronger. Maybe not as donkey strong as you got, but man, it it sure it sure does work. Uh, awesome. Yeah, good email. Thanks for the field report. I like those. John says deadlift qu- question. I uh, like he spelled question wrong. No, or you just said it weird. 
No, I took Toastmaster. I was I did Toastmasters for a number of years. Yes, and there was a guy in my Toastmasters group named Jimmy, and uh, Jimmy was a um, he was a, a pastor. Okay, super nice guy. Um, it he um, it, in Toastmasters you have a grammarian in every session, okay. and the grammarian's job is to point out when you use filler words, uh, you know, like, and to record if you make any grammatical errors when you're speaking. And I was the grammarian one day, and Jimmy would say, question. Question. Yeah. And he, in fact, he would say, Matt, let me ask you a question. Eesh. So uh, he's a super nice guy, busting his butt to improve his speaking sure. skills and everything. So at the end of the session, I said, hey, Jimmy, you know, uh, he said, how'd I do? You know, what's going on? I said, no filler words. Tip top, man. No filler words, directly to the point. A couple of mispronunciations. Question. So there's no R in there. It's question. Like he says, yeah, question. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> question. Again. Right. Like on the Legend of Zelda, you go on a quest, right? Yeah, he said, right. quest. All right, right. So you just add the I O N on the end. Question. He says, yeah, question. <laughs> And it was like an Abbott and Costello routine. We did that. Right. Thing. We did it for like nine minutes. I was like, "Man, I think you nailed it." <laughs> and shook hands and walked off. <laughs> I think you nailed it. Uh, so that was you paying homage yep. to Jimmy. Yeah, he was a good guy. I run into him every now and then. He's a. Uh, I, I don't bait him into saying question. I should. Right. Yes. Right. He says. Uh, John here says deadlift question. A quick history. I've tried lifting throughout my life, but was never taught correctly. I've always been tall and skinny, etc. He found out about uh, the program here when he was 52 at 6 foot 3 inches tall and 135 pounds. Yahtzee. Ooh. Cancer patient. He said the bar alone was very heavy for me to squat, having only been taught the high bar squat and not taught that correctly either. He says he's now 55 and 6 foot 3, and he weighs 155. His squat okay. is 240. Okay. Uh, dude, that is really heavy for a guy that tall yeah. that doesn't weigh yeah, any more skinny. than that. I know, yeah. He says he's training two days a week. Each and every workout, he goes as heavy as he can. Um, but my question is regarding the deadlift. I'm kind of stuck. Listen, man, he, he's deadlifted 305. Sure. Or five. Which at 54, 55, whatever he is. Yeah, and he's worried That's about pretty his... pretty good. He's worried about his war worn up... Excuse me. He is worried about his warm up numbers, and he has some programming questions here. And, um, and there's really thank just you one answer. And there's really just one those. answer, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, you. And the are, answer is, bro, you weigh one fifty five. Yeah, your your skin probably weighs fifteen to twenty pounds. Your lungs weigh your four, five, weighs. six pounds. <laughs> your liver weighs whatever. Right. Your brain weighs four, six, sure. seven pounds. Your skeleton, right. your you've got eleven volume. pounds of muscle on your body. Yeah, you've got almost no muscle tissue here. And uh, at six foot three, I'm six foot two, and I weighed two twenty six this morning, and I still look pretty lanky. Uh, you need to, you need to get a bigger fork and a bigger spoon to get to eating, Bubba. Yep. Yeah, and and not to weigh two seventy five, man. No, 50, you don't even 54, need to weigh the two twenty six I weigh. That's no, fine. No, you. But you even another twenty pounds. If you went from think of the difference you made, go from one thirty five to one fifty five. You went from one fifty five to one seventy five, and you'd still be too skinny at one seventy five. But if you just did that, if that's the short term goal, and by the way, man, we're coming into Thanksgiving or or Halloween, and then Thanksgiving, and then Christmas, and the New yeah. Year's. There's not, there's no better time of the year than to, to gain some weight than right now. Except, let me just say, have I talked about my issue with non-real dairy, with fake oh, dairy on this yes, podcast before, and Cool Whip? Yes, you have. So listen, if you go, don't be eating that fucking Cool Whip. And if, <laughs> and if your mom tries to serve you that Cool Whip, you kick her ass out of the house. You say, listen, that ain't okay. Don't be making that pumpkin pie and that pecan pie and put Cool Whip on it. Mom, I'm fitting to throw hands. That's right. I just bring I just bring my own tub of real whipped cream everywhere I go for the holidays, because I can't deal with that seventy nine cent jar of fucking fake air bullshit estrogenic estrogenic solids. There now we're getting down to it. Soy derivative estrogenic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it'll turn me into a beta male. I'd be like I'd be a beta by Christmas. I can't have that. Anyway, 
Eat some food. Real heavy whipping cream. Great place to start. Yeah, I don't want you to gain a lot of fat, a lot of uh, weight really fast. Being a, a man sure. of mature years, uh, you would you'll just pork up, and we don't want that at all. So, uh, pound a week. A pound a week would be wonderful. That's twenty pounds in twenty weeks. That's about right. Yes, from you, Skeletor, I would accept a half a pound a week. Uh, but Skeletor. you know, let, let's get some weight. Let's get some weight going on. Okay, I'd accept yeah. two pounds a week, dude. If you get cancer. You're That's right. You'd be fucked. dead in a hurry. That's right. Because when people take the cancer therapies, um, they lose body weight. Yep. Speaking of, we're gonna have, we're gonna have Professor Paul back on that. He sent me a yeah. really nice. Did you get that email? Professor no, I Paul have not. doing. Professor Paul sent a super nice email yesterday. He's doing great. Hit numbers again post cancer, and a bunch of it was because he had put on a bunch of good muscular body weight before he went in. So we'll have him back on the show and talk through his recovery. So yeah, man, that's a. Got to be harder to kill. Got to yep. gain some weight. Got to get stronger. That's the deal. Yep. Do it. You're and, and by the way, you're very talented. These are great numbers for somebody with those leverages and uh, and that body weight. I mean, really and, great and effort. Age. Yeah, great effort. I, yeah. You know, if we could just get you to 195 pounds, I don't want you to be a, just a monster, uh, but you know, yeah, we just get you to 195 pounds. You're just gonna get. It's gonna be great. Sure. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. One more? Can you, can, can you imagine weighing 155? And how, how tall was he again? 6'3". Six six if, if you saw a college girl that was 6'3 and 155. Oh, I'd be, be like, like, come here, baby. We're going to buy you some sandwiches right now. I mean, I'd be like, way too skinny, hun. Let's go. You know, I was, uh, my driver's license for many, many moons said 6'2", 143. So I do oh remember goodness. what that was like. Um, and here's the best thing about that. You can eat everything that you want all the time. Yeah. And uh, that's that's so good. Yeah, can you imagine at you you weren't tra- you weren't like strength training it. No. At no. that what how much did you weigh when you started strength training? Like I weighed 179 when I started uh, okay. LP uh, some 6 weeks before the first time uh, Charity and I came to see you. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine if you weighed 143 at 6'2", and you just decided, I'm going to eat all of the food in the world, and I'm going to train? What? what, what? Like, how fast your body would change? It would literally be every day. You'd get up every day and look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I don't look the same as I did yesterday. I weighed uh, 179 when I started LP. I've got these records. I could go look. And six weeks later, when I went to see you, I weighed 189. Okay. So put 10 pounds on in six weeks. Yep. Yep. And now, uh-huh. what's been your all-time high? Did you hit 250 ever? No, no, no. Uh, I weighed 243. I squatted 400 for five, and I weighed 243, and then I went and had that uh, that, that surgery. What well, You know, whatever that was. What was that? September 3rd or whatever the hell eyelid, that was? He had an eyelid lap band. That's he right. He put a lap band around his eyelids, and he'd lost weight. So since, uh, since that first week of September, I'm down to two essentially 227 because I, I got a little got a little bit fluffy. so that morbid obesity surgery was helpful that's right for they, you. Uh, I, uh, I see food in a different way now <laughs> M- we'll do one more here Mike says I love the show I've been lifting steadily for about three years and fight little aches and pains but now I have the first real issue that is a real problem his elbow has flared up over the last few weeks um, but it does not bother he says it does not bother me when I squat and I'm wearing elbow sleeves. And that helps in the bench press and press, but can't hardly do chins now. I've been doing ibuprofen and ice. Any tips? Um, yeah, stop doing chins. <laughs> That's yeah, the, I mean, you could just change your grip up, man. So chins are chins are a little better than pull ups, which are probably a little better than neutral. Maybe not. Maybe neutral grip is. Like but you probably can find a grip that's not. Um, it doesn't just wreck you on chins. And if you can't, then you're just going to switch to barbell rows and something else till it, till it cleans that up a little bit. That's that's because because it's not bothering you that bad on the bench press and the press and it is and it's not bothering you on squat, but it is bothering you on chins. It's almost certainly bicep tendonitis. Right? Because that's the one thing that's really utilized in a chin that's not utilized so much in the other stuff. Right. And so um, you know, you just you got to dig that thing out as best you can and Dixie cup ice massages and 400 milligrams of ibuprofen a few times a day for for 10 days or so and 
do the best you can to get that inflammation down. Uh, but if chinning makes it hurt worse, don't keep chinning. No, you got to lay off of those. Uh, he has one more note here. He says, a while back, Matt talked about rowing not being good for conditioning. I was finding some constant lower back pain and since has changed to the prowler, much less pain. It was good advice. Now, I don't Thanks. know what Matt said. I'm not sure he said that exactly. I think the rower is very good for conditioning. I do too. But people tend to put their back in flexion and do weird shit with their back, and it's yep. hard for the untrained rower to do it properly. And the prowler is much less skill uh, much less skill dependent, and I think that's Matt's preference for conditioning. Right? Is that true? Yeah, part of the yeah part of the deal is the I mean, right? So conditioning. There's two parts to conditioning. One is how well am I actually conditioning the metabolic pathways, and a rower will do that just as well as anything else can. But the downside that we get, and what I'll t typically preach against, is things that um, are sort of high impact or high injury rate or high skill. And the the more we can do stuff that is that's low impact, low skill, while still conditioning the metabolic pathways in a very efficient manner, like a prowler, uh, we like that better because it's, it's just going to beat you up less. So yeah. some people have issues with the rower. Sometimes the rowers hurt people's hips. Sometimes it hurts their back. To get a really big, long stroke, on the, part of the deal on the rower is you're trying to get the biggest stroke you can. It's the same thing with like sprinting. The, 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 the longer the foot stride, the faster you can be on a sprint. And so people will end up rounding their low back to reach all the way in there to the to that flywheel and mm -hmm. then pull back as far as they can. And their back goes through lots of flexion and lots of extension on the other side. And uh, sometimes that's just the problem with the rower. For me, it hurts my hips. So you just heard R R Reynolds rant about um, Cool Whip, Soy cool Whip. whip. Uh, Disgusting. Yeah. I want you guys to go to barbell-logic.com slash pie, and you can download my Handbrick's Perfect Pumpkin Pie recipe and uh, make that for your loved ones. You are a big, ones, fan, right? big fan of pumpkin pie. Scott yeah, go do that. And uh, this is going to be the best possible pumpkin pie. I think I'd agree with that. Yeah. I've had your pumpkin pie before, and it is definitely the best pumpkin pie I've ever had. Yes. And then I'll put it, I'll put in a little, little, little extra little bonus mm. on how to make your own whipped cream so you don't have to buy that cool whip. Yeah, this is going to be this is going to be great. You guys going to set the set a uh, glorious table for your friends and family for Thanksgiving. There's another Barbell Logic question and answer episode. Please go to questions, not go to. There's not really a place you go to. Open your email client and email your questions to questions at barbell-logic.com. We'll answer those on a future show. And go to iTunes and give us that five-star review. That is such a big help to us because uh, if we can have a tidal wave of those, iTunes will uh, put us in one of their uh, you may like it list, you know, because they you may like it. Yeah, you know, whatever they call that. Those little recommendations that uh, they put in front of people. That That is, uh, that's the best way that we can add to uh, our, our listenership. It's a it's a it's a game though that's hard to win. So that's the yeah. best thing. Like if they'll put us like on the front page of iTunes for everybody, then you know, we'll get huge numbers. But that's a moonshot. So the most practical way is for you to recommend us to a friend. Um, so have a look at iTunes there and go give us that review and that'd be a big help to us. And uh, remember go to barbell logic.com slash pie to get our special recipes for Thanksgiving. 